Hallelujah. Well, I won't be before you long because the Spirit of God is already here. But I believe there is a word that will add to what we just experienced today. Amen. Um, this is such a wonderful portion of Scripture. And I want to invite you to walk through it with me. It's um, Exodus 33, 12 through 21. I'll be reading from the NIV version. It should be on the screen momentarily. But if you have your Bible, if you want to look at it for yourself, it's Exodus 33. One of my favorite chapters, first, uh, chapter 33 and chapter 34, is just amazing. But um, we're just going to take a little snippet of a conversation that God was having with Moses. Amen. And it says in verse 12, Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and I found favor, and you, and you have found favor with me. Well, if you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Woo. Remember that this nation is your people. Remember, they had just came out of Egypt. They're traveling to the promised land. Verse 14, the Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Ooh, that's a word for somebody right there. Verse 15, then Moses said to him, well, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. I don't want to go anywhere without you. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and your people unless you go with us? What else would distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Verse 18, then Moses said, now show me your glory. Verse 19, and the Lord said, I will cause my goodness to pass in front of you and I will proclaim my, lame, my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. My God. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory pass by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Woo. It was like God was going to go by like a fighter jet or just all you're going to see is the vapors. That's all you can see. You can't see nothing else but the vapors of my glory. My God. May God bless your holy word. We can, that word speaks for itself. I don't even know how much more I need to say, but we're just going to go on in Jesus' name. Um, our topic today is also our theme for the, for the year of 2023. Um, it is called Rooted in God's Glory. Rooted in God's Glory. This is our theme for the year 2023. We want to be rooted in God's glory. Amen. Um, the concept of roots are so fascinating to me. I don't know if there's any arborists in the room or uh, self-made gardeners, um, but roots are so, they could even, they could be fascinating or they could be irritating. Which ones, if you're a homeowner and you wrap around your pipes and the whatnots, it could be a thing. But roots are fascinating because they don't just provide an anchor for the tree. They search for nutrients in the water through the soil, right? And it serves as a conduit for the nutrients to get through the tree and even saves the nutrients for future use. Roots are amazing. I have a picture of a root. Yeah, look at this root system. It's just amazing. Roots could go down for, for, for feet. They could go to six or nine feet, just go all across and through. This is amazing how roots can just search out. The thing I like about roots is that they're not satisfied with being in a shallow place. I like that about roots. They don't, they're not just satisfied with just staying on a surface level. They are always looking and seeking deeper. They're always looking for something else. 
looking for more, looking for more water, more nutrients. They're not just going to be like, hey, it's kind of cool right here. I'm just going to just be right here. No, roots go down deep. I love that about roots. And it, just like the roots, and while we are entering into the year 2023, I want to know if there's any people in here or online who are tired of the shallow place. I'm tired of the shallow place. I'm done. I don't want any more of the shallow place. I'm not satisfied with being in there. I don't want to just survive right here. I want, in order to survive, I feel like I need to go deeper. I can't stay in the shallow place anymore. I want a deeper relationship with God. Anybody feeling that in your spirit? Like, I just, I can't do this surface thing anymore. There's, there's, I gotta, I gotta go a little deeper in God. Well, in our passage today, we find Moses having this interesting conversation with God. And at this point in the scripture, if you read the book of Exodus, Moses has seen a lot of things. Y'all stick with me. Moses has seen a lot of things to this point. He's seen a burning bush, which was like, what? What's happening here? He's seen sticks turn to snakes. He's, turned, he's seen 10 plagues, all kind of plagues. If you went to Sunday school, you know them, right? All kind of crazy stuff happen. Read Book of Exodus, you'll see them. He, he saw a red sea open up. This is what I'm talking about Moses. He's seen, he's seen them walk on dry land through a sea. He went to Mount Sinai and saw God up on a holy mountain with thunder and lightning and smoke and earthquake. It was a whole situation. Go back and read Exodus. God, Moses seen some stuff. He's seen manna fall from heaven. Quails come. He saw a rock, a water come out of a whole rock. How does that happen? Bitter water turns sweet. Moses has seen some things. But then we get to this verse. The verse that, I, that just keeps sticking out to me is verse 33, uh, chapter 33, verse 18. Moses got the nerve after all that. He got the nerve to say, okay, now, now, now I want to see your glory. Wow. Moses, what are we doing? You don't remember everything we just done been we done seen? Oh. He said, okay, 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 okay. That was that was cool, cool, cool. But now I want to see your glory. Moses is in a place that I feel like a lot of the, uh, that we are in, a lot of place that I am in, where God, there's gotta be more. Does anybody feel like that? Lord, there's gotta be more. I've done all the things. I've done the church, I did Sunday school, I did Bible study, I've been watching online, I've been coming to church. I came in the rain, Lord. I mean, I'm doing the things. But something deep down in my heart feels like there's got to be more. It's got to be more to this. It's got to be more than this relationship that we have. It's got to be more than just saying, I give my heart to you and now I got fire insurance and I'm not going to hell. Right? It's got to be more. I love this about Moses because we come to this point where God's done all this thing, all these things for us, but now I think we get to a place where we begin seeking an experience instead of a relationship with God. You ever been in that place? I just want to feel. I want the goosebumps. I want to feel the things. I want to hear the music. I want to just walk out. It's almost as though we come to, on Sundays just to get a Holy Ghost hit. We just get a hit in the spirit. We got our high. We got our spiritual high. We good. And I'll be, I'll be back next Sunday for my next hit. Right? It almost feels as though that's how we are living. Just Sunday to Sunday. Like Pastor Mike said last Sunday. Sunday to Sunday. We're just kind of. But there's got to be more. Does anybody feel that with me? I just want to make sure I'm in the right place. There's got to be more. God, I'm looking for more. I'm seeking more. I feel like there is more. So Moses' request was very interesting when he said, Lord, show me your glory. Now, what was he talking about when he said glory? Because when we think glory, we're thinking all the, the parade, the confetti, the things, the tingles, the, the glory that we're going to fall out. It's going to be gold dust coming from heaven. Like, God, we want glory. We want the things, right? But then it was very interesting that the word glory is actually a Hebrew word. It's one of my favorite Hebrew words. And the word is kavod. 
It's a Hebrew word, kavod. And it stems from the root word for weight. Come on, weight, right? Um, it can mean glory, honor, respect, distinction, and importance. But biblically, kavod indicates worth and value and results in praise. Glory in Hebrew should be seen as abounding in honor and reverencing almost to the degree that it's overwhelming. This is the word kavod, the weight of glory. How many know there's a weight to God? There's, a, there's something, there's substance. We don't just serve a God that's, you know, maybe you might not feel him. or might. No, God is a God of substance. So when he says, God, show me your glory, he's asking for a little something different. And this is what blew my mind. This is what blew my mind. God's answer. God's answer is found in Exodus 34. Exodus 34, 6. He answered, Moses said, show me your glory. God said, bet. This is what his answer was. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And you could just leave this verse up for a little bit, Brother Mike. Look at God's answer to Moses' request. Just like God said, the Lord passed in front of Moses, just like he told him. Calling out Yahweh, like we just said. Yahweh, the Lord. The God of compassion and mercy. I am slow to anger. Come on. Filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. I forgive iniquity, rebellion, and sin. But, there's a clause, I do not exclude, excuse the guilty. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children and grandchildren. The entire family is affected, even children to the third and fourth generation. I wasn't ready for the answer. I thought when Moses said, show me the glory, he wanted a little more tingles. He wanted more smoke and lights. He wanted another miracle that God was going to do. He wanted to come back and come to church and feel like he wanted to do a backflip or run a lap. This is not what he was talking about when he said the glory. This is how God expressed what glory is. God revealed God's self to Moses. You got to get this. God revealed his character. No thunder, no smoke. He already seen all that. No chill bumps, no feelings. That's just like some of us. We're seeking an experience when God really wants to reveal to you his character. This is what God wanted to do to Moses. I want to show you who I am. I want to reveal my character to you. So when we say, God, I want to see your glory. God, I want to see your character. I want to know who you are. Why is this so important? Y'all with me? This is so important because the enemy, we have an enemy of our soul, who always wants to have a defamation uh, suit, lawsuit against God. Our enemy is always trying to do character assassination on our God. The enemy is always trying to get you and convince you that God is not who God said God is. God, the, our enemy is always trying to get you to doubt God. Always trying to get you to second guess God. Always trying to get you to be like, well, he did it for them, but not you. This is where, the, this is where his grace runs out. When it gets to you, you, way too, you went too far. The, the cross doesn't apply to you. The blood doesn't apply to you. Like, you're all so ultra bad that none of it applies. This is the enemy's job to get you and convince you that God is not who God said God is. How many of you have heard those voices? How many of you have fell victim to the character defamation, defamation lawsuit that you could be? You could, we could make a commercial. Have you been a part of a... Have you subjected yourself to, <laughs> call this number, you are entitled to a law. We should all be in this lawsuit because the enemy has come after each of us and tried to convince us that God is a liar, that God's not faithful. God won't do what, what he said, not for you. This is what the enemy wants. And so I love this, and by, by the way, the enemy has no new tricks. Can I just say that? He has the same old tricks, no new tricks, Everett. He do the same thing all the time. 
All he does is try to uh, defame God's, God's name because he knows the truth, right? This is the same thing he did in the Garden of Eden. No new tricks. Did the same thing to Eve. Hey, God, God doesn't want you to be wise. Just know that. And if you, won't, you, you won't really die, die. You surely you won't die. Like he's always trying to get us to get or go against God. So I love that when God reveals his glory, God does a whole character breakdown of who I am. Let me tell you who I am. Let me just show you, Moses, who I am. When I pass before you, I'm not going to come with the bells and whistles. I'm going to come and reveal myself to you. This is what God wants. And look what he said. You can keep that verse back up. Yep. It says, first of all, God is compassionate. Come on, we serve a compassionate God. I need you to let these things sink into you because this is counter narrative to what we've been taught, what we've been hearing, the voices that we've been hearing. This is counter narrative. So today we're breaking down all those chains, all those narratives, and God is going to reveal. When we ask for God's glory, this is what we're asking for, the character of God. God says about God's own self, I am compassionate. Compassionate means feeling or showing sympathy or concern for others. Come on, breathe that in. God has concern for you. He loves you. He's compassionate. He's not the one with the lightning bolt ready to strike you. And it, what, what, what you do? Oh, oh, that's what I thought. Uh-huh. Do it again. He wasn't like, our, he wasn't black mama. He not black mama. God is compassionate. Come on, think of all the ways that God wants to show compassion towards you. God's not harsh towards you. When God sees you, there's a smile on God's face. God's not looking at you with a frown or there they go always messing up. There they go doing the things all over again. I told him not to look at him doing it again. That's not the heart of God. God says about God's own self, I am compassionate. Look, he said, I'm merciful. That's compassion and forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. Like I could take you out, but I'm not. You deserve it, but I'm not going to do it. You should be wiped out. You should have you died in that accident. That, that last thing you pulled, you should have got caught. But I'm, I'm compassionate. I have mercy. This is the God we, this is what passed through Moses. Let me tell you who I'm, I'm merciful. He says, I'm slow to, I'm slow to anger. God is so unlike us. <laughs> so unlike me, so unlike me when I drive. God slow to anger. Look at the God we serve. He's not quick to get mad like we think. He's not always looking to get you. He's not holding, you know, the carrot out in front of you. Slow to anger. Giving lots of chances. Time and opportunity to get it right. Over and over again. I ain't even mad at you. He wrote the first Tupac song. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> Tupac got that from God. And he, wasn't, he didn't originate. I'm not mad. Slow. That means he's endlessly patient. Come on, are y'all getting this? Are y'all getting, are you happy about this? God is abounding in faithfulness. So many of our human experiences have been tainted because we've been let down by people. Rejected, abandoned, betrayed, lied to, manipulated. And somehow we translate these things that we've gone through and we put it on God. That God's going to be just like that person. God's going to be just like my dad. God's going to be just like my ex. God's going to be just like those people. God's going to be just like the society. And we put these things that we've experienced and we put it on God. That's not God. God said, I am abounding, steadfast. I'm loyal in faithfulness. Am I in the right car? Are y'all happy about this? We serve a faithful God, faithful, loyal will never, will always be with you. This is good news. This is what passed by Moses. He also says, I'm lavish. Come on. Lavish in his love. Come on, Jesus, and be lavish. Lavish. Y'all know lavish. Lavish is lifestyles of the rich and famous. Lavish is luxury. 
is elaborate. God's not just meeting like he's not the salt guy, just a little bit. Right? He's not doing your, his love like this to you. He's not meeting it out. He's lavishing his love on us. How would your life change if you really knew that this is the kind of God that you serve? How would your thought processes change if you really know God is for you in this way? That God wants to lavish you with his love. That God wants to pour out his for, forgiveness on you. That God's not holding things against you. That God's not even mad at you. I love it. He says that he forgives iniquity, iniquities. Iniquities is a very good word because those are the sins that you do on purpose. This wasn't the one that you was like, oops. This wasn't the one like, oh, I didn't even know. This is... These are the iniquities of the one you planned. You had the whole thing mapped out. You had the time, location, all the things, time, let's go. We were ready, right? Those are the own purpose. God's even forgiven those. Ah. He forgives rebellion, times when we just want to do our own thing. The human condition is that we don't want nobody telling us what to do, especially when you get grown. Don't tell me nothing. Some of y'all can't even get along with your supervisor because you still don't want nobody to tell you what to do. But you want a job that somebody got to manage you, and you don't want nobody to tell you what to do. Rebellion. These are all the things that God is. It's the isness of God. So when we're saying we want to be rooted in glory, I don't want you to think necessarily the tingles and the gray. That's a part of it, yes. Yes, I'm going to run. Yes, I'm going to shout and I'm going to do all the things. But that's not the complete experience. The experience is God. God is the portion. God is our reward. God is the thing that want, God wants to reveal self to you. This is what glory is. Look in verse 7. It says, this is a cold part right here. He says all these great things, but he threw in a little caveat. Did y'all notice that? In verse 7, he said, but, <laughs> there is a but, I do not excuse the guilty. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children and grandchildren. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generation. It's a cold piece right here because the thing about it is God forgives sin. Amen. Everybody remember that? But God doesn't ignore consequences. That's why. You really have to be careful with sin. Sin is never just sin. Sin is never just, oh, I'm just doing it me. It's just me. I ain't hurt nobody. You cannot always anticipate the consequences. You can't always plan for the consequences. God will let you forget. You are forgiven, but that consequence that you're experiencing, that's not the devil. It would got quiet. That ain't the devil. That might be an effect or a consequence. So God's like, hey, be careful. Don't be all willy-nilly out here doing whatever you feel like because there's a ripple effect. Yeah. You get, you know, in some trouble, it's going to affect your family. It's going to affect your kids. It's going to affect your... Uh, I'm filling the blank where I'm not going to get to naming stuff. Yeah. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit name the stuff. But it's never just affecting you. It will affect those around you, your community. When we look around and be like, why is God not? No, God's like, hey, these are the ripple effect consequences. I forgive sin, but you're going to have to live with these consequences. I'll give you grace through them. But sometimes it's good for us to own up to them. Come on. This is 2023 to be like, you know what? I was wrong. That's right. I'm, you know what? What I'm feeling right now, that was on me. God's going to get me through this. I'm going to make it through this time. There's grace and forgiveness for me. Say sorry to those who you need to say sorry to. Make amends. But own up to that thing. That was me. Yeah, you know, that was my bad. I wasn't in my right mind, and I was doing my own thing. That was me. All right, I'm going to get off this because they got quiet. They got quiet on me, Everett. I'm back. We back. So the result, and this is what we, we done. The result of this encounter is Exodus 34 and 8. I love this. After God did all these things, he showed his glory, which wasn't the glory that we expected. We thought it was the bells and whistles. God said, no, my glory is actually I'm going to reveal myself to you. 
And the result of it is in verse 8, Moses bowed to the ground at once and worshiped. You ever want to know if you're in the presence of God? You ever want to know when you feel the presence of God in a place or in your own personal time? Whenever you are in the authentic presence of God, it will make you want to bow low. Not even if it's not physically, your heart will want to bow low. Your life, you don't want to erect yourself. You're not going to be all prideful. You ever hear the, the spirit hit you and you be like, I should probably raise my hand right here. And you be like, no, everybody looking at me. I ain't going to go out like that. I'm, like, I'm the thug out here. I'm like, just up here, won't do nothing. Just like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to worship God the way. No. When God moves on you, when you, this is what we're preparing this ground for, for an authentic move of God. Where we, when, when God hits this place, there is nothing else that we can do but to just bow before the king. Wow. And even if we're not physically on our, our hearts are bowed, our minds are bowed, our lives are bowed. God, I don't want my pride, I don't want anything to erect itself in your presence. I will bow myself down. This is where the weight of glory comes in. It's my favorite word. The weight of glory, the kavod, because it makes you bow down. How many people need, you need, we need God to hold us down this year. We need some weight on our lives. How many want some weight on your words? You want weight on your business. You want weight on your marriage. You want weight on your relationships. We need God to hold us down. I'm tired of being a lightweight. I'm ready to be a heavyweight in the Lord. I want God to, to weigh me down. I want to bulk up. In the glory of the Lord, it's time for us to move from a featherweight to a lightweight in the spirit. It's time. It's time for us to get, get a little more weight on us. When we are asking for the glory of God, we are asking for a greater revelation of God's character. Come on, I want you to sit in that. When we say, God, send your glory, we need your glory, God, that means we want you to reveal more of yourself to us. The re that authentic who you are, who you are on purpose, God, reveal it to us. Not just the things that you can do, but I want to know you. I want to know your character. That's why Moses said, God, teach me your ways. Teach me how you do things, because I don't do things the way, and then you do a whole other thing, and I'll be all disappointed. But I wouldn't be disappointed if I knew your ways. This is how you, this is how you move. Reveal yourself to us. This is what um, the, the disciples went through. They thought they really knew Jesus. They really did. They walked with him three years. They knew Jesus was the homie. Like, they was together. They ate together. They walked together. They did all the things in ministry. They thought they really knew Jesus until the transfiguration. They thought they knew all there was to know about Jesus till Jesus walked up that mountain and unzipped himself and showed his true character. Come on, a lot of us think we know Jesus. We've been walking in this way a long time. We think we know him. We go to church. We do all the things. But I just feel an invitation from God that's saying, I want to show you more of my character. Let me exhibit myself. Let me uncloak myself and show you who I really am, my character, my essence. This is who God is. And Jesus is the express image of God in bodily form. So when we say, God, we want your glory, we're asking for more God awareness. How many people could use more God awareness in your life? Not that you're just going through life like, ooh, that was a coincidence, that's crazy, huh? I don't know how that happened. No, 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 God awareness. Like, you know what, that was really God. This is exactly what I prayed for. Oh, did I see that person, oh, I'm supposed to pray for them, not cuss them out, oh, my bad. Like. I see it now. God, make me more aware. Make me more aware of you, who you are. God wants to overwhelm us with his character. Not the music. Music is great. Not the song lyrics. Not the experience or the tingles. But God's character. That's what God wants to overwhelm us with. So that we're sitting here, no one has to say, hey, lift your hands. Hey, God's been good. Hey, wave this way. Do this thing. You're like, you already come in like, God has already blown my mind. I can't believe how faithful, how merciful, how compassionate God is. We want to know God on this level. 
right? So this is what we mean when we say we want to be rooted in God's glory, but this year we're going to do it through spiritual disciplines, right? This is the theme of our year. We're going to be rooted in God's glory through spiritual disciplines because when you're rooted, can't nothing sway you. Y'all saw that? Y'all saw that tree? Now, don't come no, no storm, no wind, no rain. When your roots go deep, ain't nothing move you. A pandemic could come. It ain't going to wipe you out. It's not going to take you out of the house of the Lord. It's not going to keep you from fellowship. You are going to be rooted. How I many, like we just said, we're tired of being shallow, tired of being uprooted by every wind. Every time something happened, I'm just falling out. I'm just all out of sorts, and I can't get my life together, and I'm sad, and I'm mad. And How I many tired of that life? No, I'm ready to be rooted and grounded in God. When you are rooted, nothing can sway you. Come on, those roots go down eight or nine feet. We got to get rooted in God, but we just can't experience God on Sundays. In order to go deeper, you need to learn God's character. And this is the ways we're going to do it. You could put up that uh, every month we're going to go be going through these different spiritual disciplines. We can't just be here on Sundays which is great. We want you here on Sundays. We want you all here. But God, every, every, every month we're going to be seeking God's glory. This month we're doing it through fasting. We're doing it through fasting. We're seeking God's glory. We want to be rooted in God's glory. And then you could just read. I won't read all of it. But every month we're going to be highlighting different ways through spiritual disciplines. We're going to be intentional. We're not just going to wait for the glory to fall. Like, oh, this church sure was great, and we just go out and have a good No, we got to be intentional if you're going to be rooted. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you go to a, uh, you want to start a garden, anybody got a garden in there? Yes, Helen knows. You can't just have the seeds sitting in the house. Like, you got to put the seeds in the ground. Like, you got to do stuff. Like, you can't just wish a garden. You have to, like, do. So same with our spiritual lives. We can't just wish. Oh, I, I hope God fall on me today. I hope the Holy Ghost Woo, I just want to feel better today. And we haven't put any intentionality into our walk. This through spiritual disciplines, this is how we'll be rooted. This is how nothing's going to sway us. This is how we will dive into the character of who God is so that the enemy tries to tell you that God is lying. You're like, no, no, God's not lying. God is faithful. When the enemy tries to tell you you're not love, no, God has lavished his love on me. We got to have some comeback lines on the devil, Amen. All right, y'all got the picture on that. So the takeaway I want to um, make on today, last thing, is our takeaway. Moses, Moses encountered God two ways. Why did Moses have this encounter with God? Why was this so important? Why did, how can we experience the same thing that Moses did? Moses is encountered God because he was, number one, spiritually curious. He was spiritually curious. He didn't just... He wasn't just, um, just happy with plateauing in God. He wanted to go deeper. There was a hunger. There was a thirst. You know those roots go down because they're looking for water, right? There's a hunger inside. He was curious. He didn't be like, oh, that was just Sundays are fine. I'm fine. I'm just checking out the box. I'm good, right? No. For us to have an encounter with God like Moses did, we have to get spiritually curious. God, what can I, there's got to, what, what else do you have for me? What else do you want me to learn? What else do you want to do in my life? Get curious. Get curious about what, don't just be settled at where, where you are in God. Um, so the, our prayer is, God, put a seek in my heart. I heard somebody pray that the other day, and it told me, uh, God, put a seek in my heart. Put a seek down in me that will make me want to come after you. God, these are things that only you can put a seek down in my heart that I'll want to get up and pray. I'll want to read your word. Put a seek in me that I'll want to be in community, that I'll want to dive deeper into you. God, put it in me. Give me the grace to do it. And number two, I feel that Moses encountered God because he, God knew that he would respond correctly. That when he felt the presence of God, that he would bow down everything in his life. Moses had said of these people that they were stiff-necked people. They didn't ever want to listen. You ever see somebody stiff-necked? 
You ever try to get a kid to do something, turn around, they wouldn't do it, they just stuck? That's what they said, that's what a stiff neck, y'all school teachers know some stiff neck. That's what Moses and God called these children of Israel. Y'all are stiff necked people. Won't turn around, won't move, won't do, just stuck and rebellious, right? That's the opposite of what someone who's gonna encounter God will, will be like. Cause let me tell you, God's not wasting words. God's not wasting his experiences. God's only pouring out to those who will receive. God does, God's not in the business of, you know, oh, you don't want to listen to me. Oh, God's like, okay, we'll circle back later, but I'm not going to just continue to do things and pour out things to you, and you don't want to receive it. So let's get pliable in God. Let's, we, let's bow down our lives to God. Come on, surrender. We said that earlier. There's a surrender. So our reflection questions for today, and then we're going to end. Let me get out the way. These are things I want you to think about. Where in your life do you need to become more God aware? Is it in your relationships? Is it in your life? Is it in your finances? Is it in your attitude? Where do you need to become more aware of God's character? Is it your thought life? If it, is it condemnation? Are you going through bereavement? Whatever it is, where do you need to become more God aware? Number two, are you ready to go deeper in your relationship with God by becoming rooted through spiritual disciplines. We're gonna be walking through these things all year. It does nothing to you if you be like, oh, that's just what they doing. Oh yeah, they on a fast. Oh yeah, they, they got prayer meeting. By the way, on prayer meeting, see how many we have beautiful people on prayer meeting. Our goal is to have just as many people who come to church on Sunday for that many people to be engaged in prayer every Tuesday, amen? Either online or in person. We want the equal, equal participation in worship, to be in Bible study. That was for free. I'm moving on. <laughs> Number three, how will you respond when God reveals his glory to you? Come on, you better bow down because we're getting ready for a move of God in this place. Are y'all believe that? I believe we are getting ready for a move of God. We are getting ready for an awakening. We are getting ready for a revival in Berkeley, in our church. In our, I believe God is about to do something amazing. So God's tilling the soil of our heart. So when God does move in amazing ways, our hearts are already postured to bow down before God. We could go ahead and go into a time of prayer. We're just going to sing this last song um, as we're... I want you to just reflect on these things as we're... Um, singing this last song. You need a microphone, sis. You got it. Why don't we go ahead and stand? And as we're standing, we're just going to have a time of prayer. I want you to think about these reflection questions. This may not have been a run around and shout around the church message, but it was much needed for our hearts to prepare our hearts for the king of glory amen to really want more of who god is it's time we don't want to just see god's hand all the things you could do for me god but god i want to seek your face i want to i want to seek your person i want you god i want you god is that your prayer god i want you i want you so, Lord, this is our prayer today. God, we just want to surrender our lives. We want to surrender all the ways that we have made it about everything but you. God, this is the year that we want to be rooted. We want to be intentional. God, we want to experience your glory, which means we want to experience your character. We want you to lavish your love on us. We want to understand how high, how deep, how wide is the love of God. So God, I pray a special blessing over all our, all the people who are watching and are in person. God, that they would experience you in a new, in a living, in a fresh way. God, that we would leave this place and not just go Sunday to Sunday, but really spend time seeking you out. Really looking and wanting more of you, not just the stuff you could do for us. God, will you change our hearts? Will you change our minds? God, we just want to surrender our lives in exchange for you. And God, we say that we just want your glory to fill this place. Lord, if there's anyone here who does not know you, we just want to offer a time for you to surrender. If that's you, just say, God, I give you my life. 
give you my heart. I believe in you and I want to follow you all the days of my life. So God, I thank you for this new chance, this new opportunity. God, bless our pastor. We pray that you will bless our congregation. God, continue to do what only you can do in this place. And we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And thank God. Come on, won't you give God a round of praise, a round of applause.